with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Too Opinionated. So excited today. I've got singer, songwriter, Jess Lee. You said that like a pro. <laughs> <laughs> no. Welcome, Jess Lee. So Hi. nice to have you on the program. So excited to uh, to talk with you. You know, for a split second there, not that anybody watching or listening will know, for a split second there, I really wanted to say the last name. <laughs> Yeah, no, we're, I'm trying to keep that on wrap. I know, so I know. I'm not bringing it up. I, well, I guess I brought it up, but I'm not going to say what it is. But you did that, a good job. That was my, that was my hesitation because I was like, shut up, man. <laughs> no, you did a good job. And you said that like a pro, it is not necessarily the easiest name to say. And it's very like, it's very different. I mean, and I always honestly expect from the get go, it's going to get butchered. So when I, I just kind of well, laugh at it now. So when someone I told you, I'm known for butchering names. So <laughs> I got it right. That's we're already starting off on a good. Thing. I was going to say, you may, you may have to change, change that because right. in my book, you killed it. Well, yeah, but you prepped me a little bit. Ahead. <laughs> they don't, I they still kind of botched they don't, they don't it because I froze, I froze for a second, but I got a good editor. So he'll fix that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. He'll be listening like, what's he talking about? <laughs> I was gonna say you should just edit out the part about the prep just they don't need to know all that just let them think well, you've become, let them think you've become a pro overnight if you listen to the show you know I don't hide anything I love all, that all the warts are out there that's fun I that's think fun. I think that's the way to do it because then if you screw something up people understand they'll give you a break Right. Well, I, you know, I think it's, I think that's with like a lot of things in life too, just kind of like being able to be vulnerable and, you know, and almost embrace it, you yeah. know, because the first thing is, is like, if you're the kind of person that if, like you said, if you mess something up and you're calling it on in yourself and you can make a joke out of it, then no one's got anything yeah. on you. That's kind, of, yeah. that's kind of like anything in life, you know, models that become supermodels and they may have struggled with hating right. the picture on their body and then they just full on embrace it and they're like nah I love the way I look I love my flaws and then everybody else does too so that's kind yeah, of that, my there philosophy. is something to be said with that if you yeah. own it then nobody can give you a hard time about it exactly and that's that I did that a long time ago and um I would I wish I would have started sooner <laughs> instead of to be perfect <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's let's start this way. Tell me a little bit about what got you into, you know, kind of the entertainment business, the music business. Why did you want to become a singer? Well, the weird part is, is I grew up with two grandparents that literally started touring the country and and pretty much part, a lot of parts of the world together too. Um, mm -hmm. Together, by the time they were doing it separately, my at one time my my grandmother had a sister act. Um, and she had come from England to, um, which I've got family everywhere. <laughs> so I was going to say you're spread out a little bit. Yes. Yes, I am. Um, she had come from England. That's the, uh, that is literally the 10% of me. That's like basically not like Spain and Italy. <laughs> um, yes. And it's funny because I always joke around and call myself a Britalian because I feel like I, I have like to. That. I have to include my nanny. She gets mad when she's like, you have a little British in you too. She gets very, very pissed off, to be honest with you. Does she talk? Yeah. I mean, she, I guess she, oh, she from, talks British. Oh, full on. Spot, spot of tea. Um, she'll call someone uh, dodgy. Like she's, uh, I know all the terms. I actually prefer watching like the British shows than I do the American shows because it just literally like takes me to England and like, um, just it make it reminds me of being back in Florida with my nanny when she when she moved out this way. But it was funny because she Love started that. with a sister act. My grandfather actually used to play um, an accompaniment for a large singer at at that time um, when he was around eighteen years old. And then um, they ended up meeting each other at a show where my grandmother was like literally booked to open for them, oh, and. Nice. Yeah. And what's crazy is they would always joke around. It was literally just my grandfather and this other guy it was a full on piano act. And 
he, uh, they were rehearsing. It was the night before. And uh, he looked over, his name was Tony Desmond. And he looked over to him and he was like, he was like, um, I call, I call the blonde. And like, they started calling like shots on like who they were going to hang out with and who they were going to try to like <laughs> win over by the end of the night. So by the end of the night, they go out to eat my grandfather, you know, and, and Tony, they go to take them out on a date as a little, like, you know, congratulatory, the show went great kind of thing. Um, and by the end of the night, he turns to Tony and he's like, I, I changed my mind. I want the brunette. She's so much smarter. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they fell in love. And, um, after both of their contracts had been completed, um, around the same time, they ended up joining and becoming a group together and started traveling. And they were initially supposed to become the first Sonny and Cher. Um, they had turned that wow. up. Yes, they had turned that opportunity down because my grandmother got pregnant at the time and they just started doing a lot more like in the United States kind of yeah. touring. Um, but I grew up around music. I grew up around, you know, two people that literally were like some of the first pioneers of being independent artists that were making a killing. Like literally, I mean, they did amazing for themselves. It was incredible. And, you know, you don't hear that often at that time where, you know, you always hear about like the major label artists and that's really it because they had all the financing and they were able to create this um, incredible life being full-time independent musicians. And um, that's, that's like, kind of amazing for the time period, especially because I mean, I know. you've got a lot more independent artists and, and I know Spotify and, and stuff. You can get your music out there a little easier, but it'd be tough back then. It's wild. And it was, and it truthfully, was so inspiring to me. Um, yep. but I had another part of my life and I had this really beautiful, incredible, inspirational couple to look at who are still together to this day. I mean, they've been together for 60 something years now. They're incredible in every way. They're everything I ever like aspire to be in so many different aspects, personally, um, professionally, but I had another part of my life, you know, and I, you know, I grew up in an abusive household and I grew up with my dad who was extremely physically and mentally abusive. And when you are born into a situation like that, no matter how many incredible things are in your environment, you have a seed planted in you at that point right? to where you are subconsciously just doomed until you make a point to go work on that trauma and work on that shadow work. And for me, you know, the hardest part is too, is that especially when it comes from someone who is like genetically programmed to love you, you know what I mean? Right. It, yeah. It becomes for lack of a more, better words, a little bit of a mind. I'm not going to curse. I'm going to, I'm actually going to let bite my Italian tongue here. You because can I curse. I wouldn't <laughs> buzz at you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get better because the TV appearances I get onto, oh, you yeah. get a lot of trouble in the radio ones. So I'm like, Ugh, I gotta get better at this. Um, but it's wild because, you know, I had very two different examples. My mother, absolute angel, but, you know, it was very hard being in a house where I would watch that kind of abuse and then also personally take on that kind of abuse. And it made me grow up to, consistently feel like I was never enough. And I would look at my grandparents and aspire that, but I would always be too afraid to start. I literally for probably until I was about 18 years old, I never even thought I was going to do music. And then I slowly, but surely just started building my confidence and, and working on myself and really how that started crazy enough was actually getting into fitness. I, I <clears throat> was dating this guy yeah. And I was dating a lot of guys that were exactly like my dad, which is very, very common. Um, I had found myself in abusive relationships. And um, one day after the relationship had ended, this guy had literally looked at me and he was like, you're a fat ass and you're never going to get better than me. And I don't know what it was at that time. I had already had started building my relationship with God, um, which yeah. really had started um, allowing me to almost like reevaluate myself and to really find not only a steady purpose, but, but really hone in on what truly mattered to me and whose opinions truly mattered to me and being able to just really hone in on that shadow work and that trauma. And I think it was just the perfect storm of already starting to dig into myself. And when he said that to me, I was like, 
screw you. I'm done with this. I'm this right here is the red flags that I keep getting myself into. Yeah. I'm done dating. I am going to just a hundred percent at this point work on myself. And at the time, I think I was 18 or 19. Um, I had moved out with this guy. I just, you know, literally went from relationship to relationship. I never worked on Jessly. You know what I mean? I never got to fall in love with Jessly. And um finally I did. You know, finally I I made that effort and I had started doing fitness and I became a um nationally qualified figure competitor. I was doing competitions all over the United States. That's I was amazing. seven. Yeah, I was seven percent body fat like year round with like an eight pack of abs. And um I ended up I'm jealous got- of that. I've been working <laughs> on abs for my entire life. And there's no there's no pack. It's maybe <laughs> one pack. I'll tell you what, it's not something to be jealous over. It what it is It's man, rough, isn't it? It's tough not, to get there and tough to maintain. I look back sometimes and I'm like, what kind of motivation did I have to do this for like free? No one could pay me a million dollars and I would do that anymore. Like I have zero desire. It's I love it. Different though when you're when you're unhappy with yourself. Exactly. You're trying to fix something. Yes. That's the motivation. And it's yes. almost you're almost overly motivated. Yes. I was very hyper stimulated. Um, I was young, like very young. I mean, I'm still very young, but like at that time I was young, I was, you know, um, just full of that hormonal, easy to anger energy where it's like, okay, I'm going to prove you wrong. You know what I mean? And and then it also just, again, it was that time frame too, I think of just really digging into myself and being like, I'm just, I'm done. Like, I'm so done with this. Like I deserve better. And there was just a lot of fuel behind it, you know? And it's really crazy because meantime, as I'm working on myself, I'm doing these competitions, I'm doing the best I can to kind of build a network of of people in my hometown. And my hometown is not necessarily um, a music town. So to find yeah. musicians and like people to write with and like, what you do out here with the network of people is so different. It's very hard to just call someone up and be like, Hey, let's do a co-write, you know, especially someone that's really like, like vetted in that, you know what I mean? Right. So, I mean, that's one of the disadvantages of growing up in a small town and there's some advantages to it. Oh, absolutely. But, but your, your network in a small town is very, very small, which can, depending on what you're trying to go into, it can, it can uh, hinder you getting it, to, to where you want to be because you don't have anybody to emulate. It's so true. And it's so funny because I actually have a song called small town go round. And it's literally about how I love my small town. I think there's so many songs that, that come out and it almost sounds a little condescending towards right. your hometown. Like I just wanted to get out and I like never wanted to do that. It took everybody around me being like, listen, if you want to do this and you want to do this seriously, you need to be playing in the major field. You need to be, you need to be out there where all of the big time people are. And it like literally was everybody that pushed me to leave. And I'm like, no, you know, I didn't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> so, so I wrote a song about that because it's so different than like a lot of the songs that you hear that almost is like girl going nowhere and things like that, that almost make you like, be like, I don't like the way they treated me. Everybody treated me so good. It was really that small town camaraderie that like I, I'm I would not be who I am today without my town you well, know what I mean that's one of the advantages of the small town because if exactly if someone out Our of unity. a small town makes it big or, yes. or successful in what they do the whole town roots for them I know I know and yeah. it's it's wild so that's pretty much how it happened where I was just I was doing this my town was already you know cheering for me with all this fitness stuff going on and then all so of you were like, competing fitness competing yes. was it so was it um more the the bodybuilding type of figure competing or were you doing like crossfit it was figure so it was purely yeah. for aesthetics um it's like one of those you're in the bikini and you're on yeah. stage and you're doing all the poses i mean and- because it like <laughs> i would think that there's there are a couple things there you know you're you're coming where you're you're unhappy with yourself right. So right. you're completely changing yourself, which is terrific, but hard to do. But then yeah. on top of that, you're not just fixing, you know, what you didn't like about yourself. You're putting it out there for everybody to see. 
Exactly. That's a that's a lot of stress. I mean, did, was there ever <laughs> a time where it it almost flipped back the other way? Well, no, that's the funny thing is I'm I love accountability. Yeah. I love it. Like I love the pressure. I love <laughs> when someone tells me I can't do something and then I'm like, you know, not only am I gonna do it. I'm going to freaking become a fitness competitor. You know what I mean? And then and I'm going to and I'm going to be in the newspaper. Now you're going to be stuck seeing me not, you know, you know, call me a fat ass. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. that's how I am. I'm fiery. I'm Italian. Like, have you seen I'm, that guy since then? Yes. <laughs> not, like, not in any not because I wanted to. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we I I've run into him. I got the text messages, the apologies, the I've got, I've gotten from multiple exes when I was on the voice or when I signed my record deal, you yeah. know, it's always, it's always, Wait, those buddy. Time, yeah, it's always <laughs> those high moments where it's, oh my God, I see what you're doing. And, and I just, I always knew you'd make it, you know, and it's like complete 180, <laughs> but yeah, don't fall for know, that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's right. No. You know, it's funny. I, if there's one thing that I've learned, um, is everybody always needs grace and I'm very, very good at, at forgiveness, but I also, you can forgive, but that doesn't mean you have to, absolutely your life. Absolutely. I was just going to say, I am, especially with my relationship with God, I've really honed in on learning how to love people from a distance and love them in a way that God would love them, but I, they don't have to be in my life. You know what I mean? And I, I think I do, I do. And, and <laughs> boundaries are a good thing. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. And I think yes. that's where uh, religion especially can be really helpful because it does teach you to kind of, you know, not just love others, but to love yourself, which is it's not so always easy to do. So whatever your opinions are about yeah. religion, because that's obviously very divisive, um, that part of it, I think, especially is really beneficial if you're struggling you know it gives you some structure it helps you to to kind of learn to love yourself and that's really important it's so true I think I think for me you know it's weird I I say God and I say Jesus and which would technically bubble me into being a Christian right yeah I don't even like break it down to religion it's so weird like I have always been into this kind of like non-denominational like for me, it's always like, I'm just, I just want a relationship, you know? Uh -huh. And I, weirdly enough, I actually do go to a church and it is a non-denominational church. It technically doesn't like categorize themselves into a, um, into a religion. And I, that's when my relationship, weirdly enough, like it flourished, it became so much less about like what the religion was and like. All right, we're back. We, we froze up for just a second. <laughs> no, we're, we're working again. You know, technology can be uh, be difficult, but if I didn't have it, we probably wouldn't be podcasting. Exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I got my dog barking in the background too. I wish she would have been doing that while we got kicked off. <laughs> Terrible to bark. We like dogs. I. She's the best girl. She just. She's so. She gets so jealous. She's like. She wants to be in here. She wants her face right here the whole time. That's what she would do. But I'm just like. She just sits there and like licks me and gets very distracting. So I'm like, you got to take her to <laughs> <laughs> what kind of dog? She's, she's the best girl. She's actually half boxer and half golden retriever. And she is oh, that's very, awesome. she's the, oh my God, she's the cutest baby angel ever. When we met each other, it was like a soul connection. Like she imprinted on me and it was absolutely crazy. It's, it's definitely, she is like a soulmate of mine for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah. Okay. Finish your thought. Yes. So where I was going with that was that like, when I really stopped trying to just like categorize myself into something and I just really started focusing mainly just on that relationship. And I think any religion is amazing. So long as like, it's not just that mononymous, like you're coming in, you're going to church right. and then you're not like living out what you're learning every day. And I think that's the biggest thing is there's just so many people that do that. Regardless, I don't even care about what the religion is. I think if you just have a higher power and you believe in something greater than, you know, your own will. I think that's a beautiful thing. And it just takes so much like pressure off your life, knowing that you're so loved by something so much greater than you, you know? And, um, and I just, I just became super focused on that relationship and really started, um, trying to 
emulate whatever I learned in there out in, in this world and really focus on like what as corny as it sounds, what would Jesus do? You know? And yeah. my life got so much better. Um, when I started like praying over things and including God in my decisions in my life, I quite literally, when I do almost anything, ask God for that answer. I ask for that guidance yeah. and <clears throat> that relationship it just brings a whole new level of confidence and foundation in, in at least my life and, and from other testimonies I've heard before. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty wild. Like, um, just how much my life has changed with that alone, besides all the other crazy things that I've been through so young. I mean, it's just, I really have had a like pretty much of a wild, wild ride of a life. You really and, have. You've had the life <laughs> of a much older person, I think. <laughs> yeah, I, I truly believe I'm an old soul. I, I feel like, yeah. I feel like I was like thrown back into this planet, like or having already lived some life, and it's like, okay, well, there's a lot you're gonna learn now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so at what point uh, along this journey did you decide? I think I'm gonna try out for the Voice. Yeah. So I didn't. <laughs> That's the craziest <laughs> part. I didn't. I literally didn't. So meanwhile, I'm doing this whole fitness revenge thing, right? Like it right. really started out as revenge. So I'm just going to be honest. And that's what fueled me for a very long time. Um, and then one day I realized I was like, I'm literally doing this for revenge. Like I don't actually love this. Like I love the concept of health. I'm very big into health. Um, I think that there's a big difference between like health and aesthetics. Right. What really, what really got me out of the fitness thing too, was I started having a lot of hormonal issues. I was completely all natural, but oh, me for my body and everybody's different, but especially when you're a woman, like sitting at 7% body fat year it's round, low, especially for a woman. Yes. I had low immunity. Um, I started having like Anna Maria, which I just butchered that. I, I can never freaking say it right. But I started having just like hormonal problems yeah. um, from all angles. And, you know, meanwhile, I, I was almost like subconsciously preparing myself, knowing like I wasn't going to do that forever. Sure. So, I, yeah, I was trying to network, build this community. I was writing songs. And weirdly enough, um, right around the time that I started finding out that I was having crazy hormonal problems, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I had gotten reached and I, I had literally put a cover up online. It was just like a random, like singing acapella thing, you know? Yeah. And I had someone who's one of my great friends now reach out to me and he's like, Hey, I just moved here from Nashville. And, you know, I was in the whole music community and like, I see that you're, you know, here. And I just, you know, I, I, I loved this. And if you ever want to write, it was just so random. If you ever want to write, if you ever want to just like talk music, I would just love to connect. Cause you know, I haven't found a lot of music people out here. Yeah. And we wrote some songs, loved it, ended up writing like five, six, seven, eight songs that just kept stacking up. And he's like, you have like a whole, you know, little, little catalog getting built here. You should really think about cutting some of these. Right. And long story short, down the line, he ended up convincing me to, to come out to, I went to Johnson City. That was the first time it's not Johnson City in Tennessee um, first place that I had ever cut any music. I did a crowd funder where I was just like, I'm just going to do it for fun. I have no money to pay for this, but I'll just see what happens. And my town, small town came out of nowhere, raised $10,000 for me to do this song and, and cut this video and make a whole music video. And I put it out. We had a big release party for it. The town all came out and, um, it was crazy. Cause it was like the very, it was like, I think the very next day that it woke up with, I woke up to it. And this, I'm talking like I had maybe 400 people like on my page, Yeah. but I woke up to it being passed around, shared over and over and over again. And it had like 60,000 views on it. Amazing. And I'm like, I had never experienced that before to me. I was like, Oh my God, mom, I'm going viral. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm going viral mom. So um, next day, 120 next day. I mean, it just kept going. And I'm just like, what is going on? And then it was probably only about a few months later, I get a call from California and it's the voice. And they reached out to me asking me to come Did you out. you believe it? Like immediately? No, Did you, I, yeah. no, I literally hung up on her. I went, aha, that's funny. Yeah. Whoever's prank calling me, whatever. And I hung up and they called me back and they're like, 
we're going to try this again. <laughs> yeah. like, and then they're like, it's so, and so I, I don't even, I probably shouldn't say who, but it, it was like a producer. It's so-and-so from the voice. And we would like for you to come out. We're going to pay for your expenses. We're going to buy. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll see it when I believe it. Here's my email. You're, you know, buy me my ticket and yeah, like, we'll see what happens, but I'm not paying anything. And like, literally they bought everything before I knew it. Like we're in a, in an email with, you know, legit, it was a legit email. We looked it yeah. up and we're like, my, mom, my mom's looking at me and she's just like, what just happened? Like, how did, how did all this just happen? It just kind of, just kind of did, you know, and it's crazy. You know, I feel like if there's one thing that anybody, especially with my journey and no matter where I go with this, I just, I always tell people just don't as corny as it sounds, don't stop believing and you have to believe it to see it. And like, sometimes it feels like the efforts that you're making are minuscule and they're not going to compound, but they do. And, and more people are watching than you probably realize. And you're probably inspiring more people than you realize no matter right. where you are in your career or whatever your fan base is or whatever your following is. Um, it's just so important to keep following that purpose that God placed in your heart, because that's why I thank him for everything. Because I literally had spent, like I said, the, at least the first portion of my, the first half of my life, constantly telling myself I'm not enough and that I just shouldn't even try, you know? And then there you go, Jesus, God just placed it right in my lap, you know? So I think that if anything, that's always like what I want to say when it comes to being inspired and, or anybody looking at what I do, um, just literally making sure that you're putting the effort out and you're doing what you can do. And that's all that he asks. And then just let go of the rest. And if you can honestly sit back and relax and say, Hey, I've done all that I can physically do. That's when you let go and you let God do the rest. And if you can really sit in that trust, that's when everything starts really coming through. Yeah, that's that's <clears throat> beautiful. And we loved you on The Voice. Oh, thank you. you know, <laughs> our opinion, my wife and I, was that you should have went further, although you did really well. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, you, were I like, always... you were Team Blake, right? I was. I ended up choosing Blake, and I'm always, like, so honored every time anybody says that because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wild ride. Any sort of TV, you know, it's, it's TV it's and there's a lot of things that, you know, you, you know, behind the scenes and you kind of, um, know, even before things are going to happen and show. And, um, you know, I'm just, I am overall, like, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the time. I, there were some things, if I was to go back and be asked like to do it again, I'll be honest. I don't know if I would. And, and I, that's a weird yeah. answer. I'm just like, not really big into like the reality TV thing, yeah. but I am thankful for it, weirdly enough. I am, I think that it was something that was a necessity in my life. I think that <clears throat> it was a great indicator of like. What well, proved you could do it? I, I think, I think it was that. I think it was like the season I needed because I was just kind of thrown into it. Yeah. Um. And when I walked out of it, I was like, I just literally felt like I'm like, okay, I am, I feel like I'm born to do this after this. Like, this is like, this is like, God sign like out of nowhere that like I'm just I'm supposed to be moving in this direction you know and um I think it happened exactly the way it was supposed to I mean you know those shows are wild the further you get along with the contracts and things like that and I was very blessed to be able to come out and then keep my stuff going which yeah. was a truly a blessing so Looking back, I always just say, I think it really happened exactly the way it was supposed to. <laughs> did you, did you get any advice from the judges that helped you? Yeah, I did. Weirdly enough. Um, so you have coaches too, like throughout the, right. the system. And it was the first time in my life that I had ever had like real vocal training. I was always this kind of like raw thing right. and which was cool and edgy. And I think that that's something to keep, like, you know, there is, a, I think there is a point of being like overly trained, you know, and then you kind of almost like lose that soul. If that makes sense. It does. I, that's, I know that's odd, but, but it was my first time ever experiencing that. And it was really cool because I was able to learn warm ups and 
like vocal techniques and things that I never used to preserve my voice. And, you know, while I was there, I ended up um, pushing my vocal to gain a whole other octave. So, I mean, I think that there was a lot that I took away. And then when it came to like the coaches on the show, um, you know, they, they had a ton of great insight. I think my favorite person that I ended up working with was Trace Adkins, just my mentor yeah. um, that came in as a guest. He was so fun. Talk about um, a good voice. Yeah. Great vocal himself. <laughs> so I, you know, I, I can always appreciate like when someone like that gives their insight because he's fantastic, you know, and, and, um, you know, he, he did, he gave me a lot of great insight and especially too, you know, just like things with power, you know, um, just really being able to like hone in on that power and round it out and still have like a lot of like umph, you know, in your vocal and like a really punchy vocal, which the power has always come very natural to me. But like when you get on those high notes and you're, and you're belting and you're still not tapping into like head voice and things like that, um, being able to still round out words and round out vocals to make them more pleasing to the ear, especially like in recordings and things like that. So there was, there was, there was some really cool lessons that I took away and mainly like on an actual, um, like vocal refinement standpoint, which was cool because it, I've never experienced that before. And I felt like it was like exactly what I needed to like take something away. And then to this day, like I still use those warm ups before I get into the booth and I, you know, I, or before I go sing, perform at a show and when I'm touring and stuff. So, um, it is cool. It is cool to take that away and still be using that. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So you've got a new song coming out on, yes. well, it's coming out Friday, right? On the it is. Show. It's here this Friday. Yeah. So, what's, so sassy. what's the song and what's it about? Yes. It's my signature sass. Um, it is, <laughs> it is, I, I can't help it. I can't hide it. It's the Italian in me. There's just so much sass and I can't contain it. So it comes out in my writing. <laughs> sass um, is okay. We like yeah, that. No, I do. It's, it's really, really fun. This song is a sign that like you literally, it's crazy enough. It's a breakup song, but like you don't realize it when you listen to it because of the way that me and my co-producer produced it. Um, you literally just hear it and you like want to shake your ass with a drink in your hand. Like that's what you want to go to Mexico, drink in the hand and just be dancing on the beach. That's what you want to do with the song. But the whole thing is about, it's very quick. It literally starts off with, I packed up all my shit today, watch them throw it on the plane. Like you threw our love away. Cause we all know how they treat our luggage on. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> rough, rough. And it's, rough. it's just stemmed from, you know, past, the past relationship, it starts with that kind of as the setting. And then the rest talks about, you know, kind of creating this almost like the Beach Boys did. Um, uh, how do you say Cocoa or whatever it's called? Oh, is that them? <laughs> is that them? Did I just screw that up? Is no, that's the them. They're the Beach Boys. That, that's uh, it's um, uh, it's Coco something. Yeah, Coco um, or something like that. Coco, Coco Rum. Yeah, I don't that's know. definitely the Beach Boy. I'm a big Beach Boy fan <laughs> on their music. Uh, yeah kokomo kokomo thank you i always want to call it coco rum maybe yeah, it's yeah. Just, i knew I it like was going to come to me i just i needed it. <laughs> well it's funny because we had kind of that idea we're like okay we don't want to hone in on this breakup the whole time like let's bring it into like what is south of somewhere yeah and we kind of give that obscure explanation of like what it is and where we're headed to kind of like kokomo coco rum <laughs> You call it a cocoa rum. I think I like that better. I, I kind of like the cocoa rum. <clears throat> yeah, cocoa I'm rum. I'm sure the Beach me, Boys would appreciate that. It makes me like want to listen to it with like a tropical drink with an umbrella and I'm drinking cocoa rum to cocoa rum. So, yeah. I mean, like, they... I, no complaints here. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but it's super, super fun and it's super sassy. And it's just basically the whole concept of the song is, you know... And we go through seasons and sometimes people unfortunately are part of that where, you know, someone's supposed to be in your life for a season. And I think that there's a time, especially depending on the situation, I think that there's a time for acknowledging that and grieving for lack of better words, you know, over the situation, but um, <clears throat> also like making a point to go on and live your life and realize that like someone else in a relationship doesn't define you and your love for yourself is so much more important. And the whole song is literally like she leaves and she's on this trip by herself. And it's kind of like um drunk on a plane vibes where he gets <laughs> he gets 
you know, broken up with right on his wedding and he still has got the two tickets. So he just goes on his own. And anyway. very, yeah. And it's very much of that. It's like, I think, um, you have to, you have to be able to just like live your life still, you know, and, and enjoy the life that you're given, because if you're here, you're still here for purpose, you know, and it's important to, to acknowledge that and to embrace yourself and to still have fun because that's, I think we're here for a reason, but I think we're also here to enjoy our life and, you know, make an impact and make a yeah. difference, you know? So. Yeah. I love that. I, and, and the song is terrific. We've been, oh, thank we've you. We, we played it. I uh, didn't know if you had listened to it or not. That's why I kind of started describing. Yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. No, we, we, uh, uh, my brother was in town, uh, this weekend and a couple of his kids, um, had birthdays. So we oh. had a pool party at the house, had the whole family there. So we were playing some of your music. At the at the pool park, and it is very danceable. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's really uh, really good. We had a few. We that was one that uh, that we loved, but they liked uh, raised on it. Oh yes, raised. And then on there it. was one that was a uh, um, uh, drinking something. Drinking thinking. Drinking thinking. Oh. That was it. Yeah, those are the ones that that were they were very popular at the pool. Thank park. you. <laughs> oh my goodness, raised on it is wild. That song, man. When we wrote that, the guy that came in and rapped on it, <clears throat> he ended up writing his rap later. So we wrote the original song, and he just loved it, and he wanted to cut. He yeah. wanted to be a cut on it. So it's funny because every time I think of that song, I always go back to the music video because we had a. Um, have you have you seen the video? I have. Yeah. So we get there's a car scene chase. And what's funny is like, it's real. It's legit. Like we had the street closed down with officers really? and stuff. And yeah. And um, we had the actor, weirdly enough, who was actually a real officer. She came on because she could drive like that. She's a killer driver. And then we had a stunt driver that we hired out mm -hmm. and they were doing their thing. And it was so funny because I remember him just being like, hey, I don't know if I'm really supposed to do this, but he's like, do you want to be in the passenger seat while we're filming these parts? And he has me flying around in this car. <laughs> so we really are like all those shots of me in the video. It is legit. Like I'm having a blast because we're that. running. I got to literally run from the cops. It was wild. Yeah. I'm and it, your videos are really <laughs> well done, which I, I love you. that you're doing videos. Thank because you. Because I grew up when MTV was first coming out and videos. Right. Thing. Yeah, well, I, I love it. I kind of did. I was a little past that. Yeah. You know, it, and it became like all of a sudden music videos like didn't become like as in demand, I guess. Because yeah, they kind of kind of petered out there for a little while. I think a lot of it has to do with streaming and the labels and finances coming back. And what's so cool is with my deal, one of the biggest things that we wanted to talk about was like, I'm such a visual artist and I have these songs that like, I know what I want to do behind it. And it was really cool to be able to have a budget to literally put out a ton of videos this year. So it's really exciting because all the videos are, are, um, my story. I get my director to come out, but every single part I'm right there with him with the pen and the camera. And I'm like, Hey, I want them to do this. And I want them to do that. And I'm very, very, very hands-on with my career just because I did it so long as an indie, um, you know, doing that that way as well. So I kind of like have a tr have trouble letting go. So <laughs> I'm very glad that my record deal embraces that probably toxic trait. <laughs> <laughs> what have you thought about acting? Yes. So um, I think we're going to do a little more of it. You know, we've we've kind of been building this catalog where like in a lot of my videos, I am acting and not yeah. just necessarily doing like you have like the rascal flats video where they you see that they always hire an actor and then like their pure performance you know and i love that and i think that there's songs for that we actually have a video that's going to be coming out soon from a song um that will be coming out later on around uh fall time yeah and that setup but m the majority of my videos it's like i'm acting in it you know and um, my team and I kind of have been discussing, you know, with some, some connections and things coming up that we're probably going to start entertaining that world. I am a little bit though. I mean, I'm a little, a little bit of a stickler. So like I do have boundaries. I am one of those girls that I am. Um, we like to call it with my team. We like to call it Dolly Parton sexy, right? <laughs> like, yeah, like Dolly Parton has this air about her. She was undeniably gorgeous right sure. and had this had this beautiful sex appeal but she never like 
overdid it where she like showed a lot of skin actually a lot a lot of the time she wore like those tight one bo- onesie bodysuit kind yeah. of things right and that's kind of always been my style like not even like I think maybe subconsciously you know growing up with Dolly and listening to so much traditional country and her just being so different I think maybe subconsciously like I stylistically maybe kind of emulated that a little bit but um nothing wrong but, with that you know, that's, a, that's a pretty good person <laughs> to emulate right um <laughs> but I've just you know I think too as my relationship with God again you know like that's so important to me and I just personally and to any other woman that decides different that's that's their relationship with themselves and whatever you know higher power they have but it has become important to me to make sure that um I do have a limit on what I show and what I do and yeah. even even acting it is important to me and um you know so it does disqualify me for some certain roles just because I do have a boundary on on what I won't do and I think um I think we live in a very wild world today and there's a lot of things that just everything goes, you know, and it's, it's kind of one of those things. I just feel like if you're a person of influence, um, you're just by, just by default, you're going to have young people that watch you and idolize you. I and love I that. Cause, cause thank you. True. You know, whatever you do, you know, that the younger generation is, is watching. And I don't think enough people, that. Absolutely. And I just, I don't think enough people that do this really focus on the fact that they have to think bigger than themselves, you know, and I've always just been drawn to that. I've always just felt that in my whole soul for whatever reason that it's important to me to, of course, like embrace your sexuality as a woman. And I think that that's a beautiful way to do it, but there's always a classy way to do that. And I want to align <laughs> with the classier side of that, not only for my soul and my relationship, but also that I never, ever, ever want a young girl to look at me and I'm doing something inappropriate and then think that that's okay. And I think there's just more artists that need to stand up for that. So that's kind of something that, you know, I'm always making sure that I'm drawing that line because there is a way to be sexy and not bare at all, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of us from an older generation would say that's more sexy. I I would absolutely agree with that. I think, you know, I'm actually not going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say the quote that someone had said the other day, because it's a little vulgar, but I think there comes a point where um, when, when you bear it all there, there's almost nothing else to give. I'm going to yeah. almost reword what he says. Um, and There's I think some truth to that, because once once you kind of take yes. that step, it's out there forever. Absolutely. It's you can never take that back. And yeah. I never want to be stuck in that situation. And of course, there's other situations, too. Like you hear about the people that have, um, you know, videos that they didn't even know about being leaked and things like that. And that's that's not that's a different thing. Well, that's terrible. About, yeah, that, yeah that um, part's terrible. And that's that's being victimized. I'm talking about like vulnerably just undressing and you know, just over sexualizing yourself. And I just, you know, I just feel like there is a level of importance um, to stress, you know, that there there's children that just don't need that kind of influence, you know, well, and, it, I, to me, it distracts <clears throat> from your talent. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to yeah, say there's you a whole nother to do that. I was going to say there's a whole nother part to it when it comes to like talent. And, you know, I, I, I don't ever want someone to look at me and be like, oh yeah, you know, I, I, I sport her cause she's got nice boobs. You know what I mean? Or right, I saw right. her boobs, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but then they can't name a song that you sing. Exactly. For me, it's always been, if I'm going to do this thing, it's going to be because people, A, love the person that I am, yeah. just my personality, my, right. my smarts more than anything, or they just love my music. And to me, like, that's what I want out of my career. And then whatever anybody else is doing, I, I applaud whatever path they want and, you know, everybody right. has a choice and their own journey and I'm never, ever going to judge, but I have the same right, you know, and for me, my journey is a little more refined. So yeah. Yeah. I like that a little more refined. I like that. You thank you. I'm a, I'm a complicated person. <laughs> I'm very old school for such like a young person. I'm, I, I'm very old school. And I think a lot of that too came from the small town. And also, again, you know, I had 
like my, with my dad, you know, it was just, I grew up knowing what it's like to automatically have a man not treat you right. And then on the other hand, I had my mom who, especially when we got free of that situation, my mom was always so good at being like, you don't need to use your body to, to get anywhere. And I just want you to know that you are so damn smart. You are so damn talented and let those things shine. Let those things be the, the things that get you to excel. And she always was just like, you, you are good enough and you don't need to feel like you have to put yourself in a situation and bear it all to be a success. And I thank her so much for that because I, I truly believe that she putting that into my head always made me come back to being like, okay, like, and I mean, and not only, not only that too, like, and I, I will never understand, like, I would never want my grandparents to see that. <laughs> I yeah. would just believe well, Yeah. And not, not just them, but the whole town, you know, small town, oh. everybody's going to see it. Yeah. And then when you go back, you're going to know that. Oh, I know. And I just, I, I've just, you know, there it's a longer path. I hate to say it in this world today. It is, it's a longer path. It's easier to do that. And I don't, I, I will never, ever care what other people say about that. It is easier to take that route. And I've always liked the challenge. So I'm okay with that. And I would rather take the long way around and know that when I get to where I want to be, I can truthfully sit there and say, I never compromised and I did it my way. And I'm, I'm so happy. And I never had to you know, put strife on that spiritual relationship or strife on that relationship with my mom or my family. I never, I've never have to go back and worry about if I embarrassed or hurt anybody. And that stuff does matter to me. And I think, I think it should matter to a lot more people because those are the people that raised you and loved you. And, you know, I, I care about what my mom thinks about me, you know, (laughs) thank you. (laughs) What, uh, what have your grandparents thought about the musical career? They, they love it. I mean, they thought that I should have been doing it a long time ago. So when I finally actually started doing it, they were just like elated and, and to this day, they still are. And they're some of my biggest fans. And, you know, if, if I'm playing in my home state, they are there, no matter how far away it is, if it's in Florida, they're going to show up, you know? And, um, I think for them too, it's, it's really cool because I'm in a relationship with someone who does music and oh, nice. they, which is weird because I always told myself, no, I'm never going to do it. But at the same time, subconsciously, I've always seen my grandparents and yeah. um, it just kind of worked out the way that it was supposed to be, I guess, because we've been together for about five years and oh, um, you. thank you. And yeah. we, we understand each other. And now I see, you know, in hindsight, why they worked so well. I, I would used to be, you know, a baby, like, no, you know, like. Yeah, like 10, you know, nine or 10. Yeah. And I'd be like, how do, how do you do it? You know, how do you work together? And I'd have all these questions. And I'm just like, don't you get tired of each other? Like being with each other all the time. And then here I am, here I am living it. But it's crazy because every other guy besides him has never been in music and like that I've had a relationship with. And it's so funny because he is literally the only one that truly understands, especially when things get really crazy busy. Um, And I think that we have that really, really special bond because of that. And now I see why they're so close because they've always had this sense of purpose in their life that became this kind of like one united mission together. And um, I, I, I truly believe it brought them to be closer. And to this day, like I said, they're still together. So it's, it's pretty crazy. (laughs) Good for you. Have have you, have you run into your dad at some point since your career kind of took off? Right. So my dad actually, then this is kind of became one of the stories. My dad actually passed away while I was on the show. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So while, while I was on the voice. Yeah. I hate um, to hear that. Even, even though you had such a difficult time with him growing up, I hate, I hate to hear that. Oh, me too. Because, you know, I think my dad was one of those people. I, I'm again, I'm, I'm a very weird introspective human. <laughs> I, um I think that the soul is pure. I think that I think that the soul comes here and it's pure love and light. And I think when our human flesh gets involved, that's when whatever you want to call it, demons, jealousy, all these things, all these emotions, all these, you know, things that really tie us down into that darker side that, that we all are capable of having. Um, I think that's what really pulls it out of us. And 
it was the weirdest thing when my dad passed away. It was like, I literally had this thought come into my head that I physically, like I physically have no one to be angry at anymore. Like he's gone. Right. Like what, why am I harnessing all of this? And, you know, I'm very grateful because there was a period of time um, before he had passed where I, I had actually um, called them up. And I had said, I just want you to know that I, I forgive you. And I don't necessarily want to have a relationship with you, but I forgive you. And I don't want you living with this pain, um, that I hear that you have from other people. And, you know, I had heard that he was, you know, drinking himself to death and doing drugs and living a very, very hard life and hard, angry, sad life. And, um, it made it very hard to hate him. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, when, yeah. when you know, when you know, someone is literally hating themselves that much. And I'm a very, very empathetic person. You could literally try to kill me. And if I feel like you have even an inkling of forgiveness in you, but you're just hurting and you don't know how to just be a better person, I will be there and be like, okay, let's work on this. Like, that's just how I am. And that's kind of how I wanted to be with him and um and again love him from a distance and don't you think uh, that's a better way to be though cuz it doesn't tie you down with the negativity and the negative emotions you know and it so let you true. move forward it's so true it's like i don't i can't stress enough and you hear it all the time and i think until people really and we're all we all have to figure it out for ourselves you know it's you're never going to take it and start utilizing it into your daily life until you've experienced it and I, I really believe there's no amount of talking. I think I think you can kind of subconsciously plant something and someone can look back and be like, oh yeah, I've heard that before. But no one really changes. I mean, even alcoholism, my dad had it, you know, and everybody would tell him all the time, you're going to kill yourself. You're going to kill yourself. And he quite literally did. And he never wanted to change for himself. There'd be stints where people would annoy him enough to where he'd be like, okay, I'll stop, you know? And, and, but he, he never could actually stop. And I think that, you know, that's a lot of things. I think there's a lot of things that grab hold us, you know, grasp onto us and you have to be ready to change for yourself, that's whether right. that's like a personality trait, Yeah, that's right. you know, whether it's a, a addiction that you have, um, whether it's just an anger that you harness, I mean, you have to be able to to realize it for yourself and then say, I want to change because this is causing me more suffering than it is happiness in the end. And he never got that, but I did, you know, and I learned that from him watching him. There were so many things that I had to unlearn, right? you know, looking back, but there was also so many things that when I started building that relationship with God and really taking like a bird's eye view of everything. There were so many things that I learned from him too, that I just didn't want to be, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's a painful, sad thing to say. I wish obviously the circumstances were different, but. I love but, how open you are about it though, because I think just the, the journey you've been through, I mean, it's unique, but it's also not unique with a lot yeah. of people. And, and I think it can help you know, just talking about it, maybe it helps somebody else that's struggling in similar situations, at least to the point where they might understand that they have to take a little bit of control over their own life and figure out what's best for them, no matter what else is going on externally. I appreciate that so much because I think that we all go through the things we go through to not only like learn the lessons for our life, but yeah. especially, you know, I have no idea why, I, like I said, I had no intention to be doing this, you know, and I kind of just landed here, you know, and, and I'm grateful for it. Now I'm all in, but I also think that wasn't a mistake. And, you know, I want to utilize my platform. I want to utilize my time here to truly make an impact. I don't think there's yeah. enough people that can say that they take the gifts that they were given and use it for so much more than themselves. And if there's one thing, I mean, there's a lot more things I want to do, especially the more established and the larger I get. But if there's one thing that I could always, always do from the very beginning when I had nothing to give, and it's still something that I'm going to always try to give is I, I experienced that. And I know that there's other people out there that are going through very, very similar things around the world. And the, the one message, like I said, that I always want to give is no matter where you come from, I'm the example, as long as you don't lose hope, you know, and as long as you have faith and 
like I said, you're showing up every day, regardless if, if you can only just give an inkling of energy into what you're doing, it eventually starts compounding on itself. And, you know, I think my whole story and who I am is literally just supposed to be the one that tells you, you, you can, no matter where you come from. I love it. I love it. And Jessely, thank you so much. This, this has been <laughs> terrific. I love your story and how thank positive you. you are because you definitely could have went the other direction. It, and, it's and maybe very, did for a little bit when you were competing, you know, you, you kind of channeled that energy in the way you needed to at that time, but yeah. then you figured it out after that. And you're like, okay, long-term, that's not too healthy. And yeah. then you got to put your energy into to the music. I, I just think it's a, it's very inspiring. Perfect. Thank you. Purpose is important. And, um, I have a strong, the strong program. I, we're reviving it again. And unfortunately it had to, um, it had to take a halt during COVID and yeah. we we're trying to revolve it, but, um, revive it. But, um, uh, when I first started, I immediately started a foundation called the strong program. And it's where, you know, I have these hard discussions one-on-one -on -one with kids in schools. And I actually have a full-on curriculum with a notebook and we sing, it. it's an, it's incredible. It's the amount of like children's life that it's, I think purpose is one of the number one problems we have when it comes to any sort of violence, especially in school systems, but even with adults later on in life, I think, I think the biggest thing is like, honing in on that purpose and finding that true belief that you can, and you're here for a reason. And, you know, it's, it's crazy because you had said that you can literally take another turn. And I think, I think we all are born into our own situations of struggle, no matter what tier you're on. Right. And I've been there to be the per person to witness even my, you know, my own family members that, took the opposite direction, you know, and it was so important for me to be able to say, no, it, I don't care what you say. I came from the same situation. This is a choice and right. people need to take accountability. There's a lot more people on this planet that need to take accountability because we all go through some hard shit. And in the end, it's where, where do you, what do you want to turn it into? You know? And, well, that's uh, right, because because we've all got situations where if we let them, it can drag us down. Yeah, but you have to choose to not let it drag you down. Not always easy to do, but that's what you have to do to get out of those situations. Absolutely. And I was close. I mean, I I don't necessarily the story would be too long if I went. I'm giving you the Cliff Notes version. Yeah. Believe it or not, you know, <laughs> there was a period of my life, and I full on admit this. I was working in nightclubs. I was cocktail waitressing at 16 years old, just to be able to make money. And I was doing terrible things. There were many, many nights I should have died because I was so reckless with my body. I had the, I was so reckless with my life. I had, um, that whole mindset of, Oh, I had no daddy around, you know, so I'm just going to be wild, you know? And I was, and I look back sometimes and I'm like, I should be dead today. Like I really should be not here. And for some crazy reason I am. And <laughs> well, I think we know the reason because you're paying it forward now. So yeah. I, I mean, I think that's the the purpose, the reason. Yeah. And, and I love that, not just for you, but but the fact that we can kind of enjoy the music and what you're putting out there. I mean, it's good thank for you. everybody. But I think I think that's part of thank you so much. I think that's part of the story, though, is like I always like to preface that with it that I was not for a I'm I just wasn't some perfect person that made a, a decision and was like, you know what, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to let this bother me. It did for a long time. And there was a very dark, reckless, destructive path in my life. And the other part of this, this lesson, I feel like from my own experience that I have to give is even if you find yourself going down the wrong path, like you don't have to let your past define you, but that also, you know, you can, you can, you can be going down the wrong path and still get back on, you know what I mean? And still figure it out. The, you're, you always have every day is a second chance. You know, every day is a new day to change. Right. And, and I went a long time being a shithead for, for <laughs> lack of better, for lack of better words. And again, you know, faith changed me and, um, and realizing again, just figuring out, realizing that I have a purpose and everybody, if you wake up, if God gives you an opportunity for another day, it's because you're supposed to be here and do something. So, you know, make right you know believe that and and allow yourself to you know well yeah and and thank you for sharing 
the the story because I I think it's it's terrific. It's kind of like you know going back to your your uh, bodybuilding days. It's kind of like that when you go to the gym, the only person you're competing against is yourself, and you're just trying yeah. to do a little bit better than you were the day before. It's the truth, and that's just it's the same the way in life. I mean, you should just be every day just try to try to. It's move the forward. truth. I love that you say that because I use that analogy all the time too. And I think a lot of sports analogies are great with that. And again, like I took so much away from being an athlete and what I could bring into weirdly enough, the music business, but there were so many days I'd wake up and I'd already been training with my coach, you know, for um, like months. And especially when I was first starting and I'd, I'd lift up my shirt and be like, Oh, my abs are not there. My abs are not there. And I'd be so frustrated because I'd be doing everything she said, you know, and, and, uh, everybody's path is just different. And it, and it wasn't until I was just like, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. God has a plan, you know, and, and he did. And then it was funny. I went from being the girl with no abs to like, I show up and my coach is like, yeah, some people, you know, they show up on stage, they have four, some people show up and they have, you know, a six pack. And I come in and I'm like eight pack, like, <laughs> geeked, you know, geeked out. And I was like, man, you know, that right there is just a small example that sometimes you're not getting what you want right now because God, the universe source, whatever you want to call it, has something so much better planned for you and just allow, allow them to give it to you, you know? So I love it. I love it. So the song is South of Somewhere comes out Friday, August the 4th. So what's, what's next? Are you, are you planning to tour? Is there, you said there was another song coming out this year. Are you, are you working toward like releasing a full EP or, you know, what's I, coming up next? I will literally tell you that in two seconds. I think this computer is about to die and it's not my computer. So I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Hold on. I don't want to die in the middle of Hold on. I'm sorry. All right. So we got, we've got you plugged up. <laughs> now the we're not in danger of losing you before, uh, before we finish. So, oh okay. So I was asking, you know, what's coming next? Are you planning to tour or is it more music coming out? Or are you working on an EP? What's coming next? Thank you for asking. Um, so this year has been catalog focused for sure. I actually am normally very, very heavy on the road. And, um, I kind of put that on the back seat, honestly, with me. Cause I, a lot of people don't know this. I produce my own stuff. I write my own stuff. Yeah. So this year has been so hands on. Yeah. I, since signing my record deal, um, they really wanted my projects to emulate me and we, I'm releasing more music than ever. I've filmed six music videos this year already. So it's been wild. So quite honestly, what that's a lot. I mean, we're just, is. we're only halfway through the year. That's a lot. It is. It is. And still playing some shows. I'm not, I haven't been touring like I should. I think next year is what we've been talking about. Cause I'm also in the middle of um, transitioning my booking right now to a little bit. I'm yeah. upscaling a little bit. So we're getting me to a little bigger, better situation. So next year is when I'm really going to be announcing my hardcore tour stuff. See, what but, I hear is that you're playing less bars and more like bigger venues. Yes. I thank God. I've been really blessed to finally like graduate a little bit from the bar scene too. I, I did the pay your dues thing. There's some of them that I actually still love to play. Um, but it's been really fun because every year it's more like festivals and, yeah. you know, um, like venues and, and tagging on with different artists and things like that. So I'm excited for next year. Cause it's going to be from what we're from what we're thinking and from what we're seeing from on the back end here, it's going to be very exciting tour wise. It's going to definitely be one of my largest tours and um, definitely one of my uh, most memorable at the moment. Um, but the next thing that's coming, and I, I don't even know if I've actually officially announced this. Yet. I know I have it on my socials, but I'll just go ahead and say here, I'm actually going to be releasing my debut album. So I have not released a full LP yet. Yes. And that's where a lot of my time has been going because we've been batching all the music videos for it. Um, We've been creating the songs. I've been in the studio. I've been the one producing all of them with my co-producer and um, yeah, it's been writing for it. So it's been a lot of writing, a lot of creation, uh, obviously like batching all the promo stuff, the music videos. So this year has been content, 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 because the goal is, is we're going to take this album and we're going to tour it at the top of the year. So, um, it's, 
it's exciting. We've got, we've got the content to tour and it's going to get wild. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I look forward to, uh, to that. You'll have to come back when you, when you, after you go on tour and tell us how it went. I would love to, if, yeah, if you're inviting me, I'm, I'm there. You got an will... invitation. You just yeah, holler will... and we'll get you on. <laughs> I love it. I will never say no, no to a party. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the last thing before we wrap up, um, where can we find you on social media? Thank you for asking. So um, the one of the easiest ways to find all of my stuff from like my socials to merch to when I announce my tour is www.jesslemusic.com. And that's J-E-S-S-L-E-E, -S -S -E -E, all one word, music.com. <laughs> I, I always, I will say that my whole life. <laughs> um, and then um, all of my, I, I, well, now I've got threads and stuff too. So I think that is too. I think it's threads, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, which I still like, <laughs> I've still been using it. I, I have fun on Twitter. You know, but, it switched to like X now. I know. I saw that actually it just popped up one day. And I'm I like, know. I was like, did we know that was happening? What? I have no idea. What's funny is I had a moment for a second. I'm like, I don't remember downloading this app. And I was like, <laughs> and then I, and then I like literally like had it in my head and I'm like, what was there? And I like had like a whole moment and I'm like, oh my God, it was Twitter. <laughs> yeah, it was Twitter. I, I didn't yeah. realize. And, and maybe it's just yeah, I don't pay enough attention, but yeah, right. it be off guard. I noticed that it <laughs> changed on my phone. I was like, um, who downloaded this? And I like read process of elimination. I'm like, okay, stop being paranoid. It's Twitter. So, <laughs> um, but yes, but all that Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, now threads is all at Jessly Country. Um, and then my YouTube, which is exclusively where all my, my music videos are. So if you're a music video lover, if you love seeing visuals with songs that you like, you definitely want to subscribe to my YouTube. So you don't miss any of my music videos. Cause that's where they go exclusively. Um, and that should be whatever YouTube is with like Justly music. But if you just Google, it comes Just right up, right. But if you just Google Justly, all one word, J E S S L E YouTube, it's right there. So <laughs> Oh my goodness, Capo's being so sassy. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you can tell that's your dog. I know. Everybody says that too. They're like, that you if you could birth an animal, you would have birthed that dog because she's literally the spitting image of you. I'm like, I know it. I know it. She comes on tour with me. She rides on my tour bus with me. She is so sassy. Like, and my band loves her. She's so funny because she's just there's some nights where she'll literally just end up, I'll find her and she's just snuggling with my drummer in bed and they're sleeping together. Hey. And I'm Every band needs a dog. I know the road dog, the road dog. <laughs> she's the best. She's the best bus dog too, because I bought my tour bus and I, yeah, I just bought it. And it was so funny. Cause I'm like, thank God I've got a good dog. Cause she's like, I had some friends that had the dogs where they get like, they send me a picture and half of their coffee tables missing oh, while they yeah. were out. And I'm just like, Oh my God. And I, she was never that dog. She was yeah, just Yeah, it could be bad. Some oh, dogs not good. <laughs> she was she was the best girl. She was potty trained in like four weeks. Like I she was, man, I'll tell you what. Shop, I mean, do, adopt, don't shop and look for boxer golden mixes because she's smart. She is smart. A golden retriever is supposed to be the smartest dog. <laughs> yep. Get a golden mix. I promise you. Like they will not disappoint. They are big babies, but they are so smart. Like she blows my mind. I'm like, my God, girl, like she's like Pavlov's dog. I'll do something one time. And she, <laughs> I'm serious. And she's picked up on it. There was like one time where I'm brushing my hair and I put it all together because she started looking at me and she'd look at me funny. Cause like, I'll brush my hair in the morning and then take her on a walk. So I'm brushing my hair and she's looking at me and she's like, like punching me with her nose, like a dolphin. That's kind yeah. of her thing to get my attention. And I realized, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, you, you think we're ready to go out. Like you're mad at me that I didn't take you out. So she's just, she picks up on things really fast. She's the best. So she sounds like a good dog. She's the best girl. <laughs> <laughs> I never wanted children. That's my baby. <laughs> well, that's right. Everybody needs something. That's my baby. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's all right. My, I love my son would I love agree with that. Yeah, I, I love children. I'm like in fun anti mode. I'm I'm in the phase where like all of my friends are starting to get married and like entertaining having babies. And I'm like, I will watch them. I just want I want the best of them and be able to be like, okay, here, here you go. <laughs> my uh my son Brett, he says um he's a hunkle. So he <laughs> says it's 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 like a fun uncle, except hunkier. <laughs> I love that. That's 
That's got that's that's that needs to be in the dictionary. That's what I said. I was like, that's pretty good. I wonder what a girl version would be now. I feel like I want to figure that out. Yeah. Now you next time we talk, you gotta you gotta have come up with something. <laughs> exactly. I'm like now I want to figure out. I'm I'm I guess I'd be a a bant, a beautiful <laughs> aunt. <laughs> I don't know. I need to. I need to refine that. We'll workshop it. Yeah, we need. We need to work on it. Let's not. <laughs> let's not go ahead and you know put a copyright on that. That's let's right. That's trade, right. We'll, let's not trademark that one yet. We'll do keep some brainstorming. <laughs> see what we can come up with. Yeah, that will. That will just get us started. <laughs> but yeah, that right now. That's it. That's the leader right now. I love it. <laughs> can we come up with something better? <laughs> yeah. Let's try to beat it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been a, a just a pleasure. And you st stuck in there when we had some technical issues. And when I fumbled around at the beginning, you were great. One of them was mine. So <laughs> that's right. It made me I feel. I got you back. <laughs> that's right. I, I felt better at that point because then it felt like we were in this together. We, But that's what we do. We keep it real. You can always, you can always count on you and me, Mike, to keep it real. So that's true. <laughs> that's very true. Just, I appreciate you. <laughs> you would think we knew each other much longer. That's well, that's the Italian in me. Okay. I'm like, just wait. If you were here in person after this, I'd be like, okay, let me feed you. Like manja. Let's let's I, let's get, I would eat. Let's get some food. I in would your allow bed. that. I might cook you up some lasagna and cornbread together. <laughs> does your did, does your grandmother like lasagna and cornbread? She loves it. And she makes weirdly enough, she makes she had learned from my family, like she went, she went deep. She was like, Okay, if I'm gonna be a part of like an all, I'm the only non-italian i need to make sure that i can show up with some food and she can cook that's she awesome. can cook she's she took lessons <laughs> that's that's awesome do you, would, yes. do you call her grandmother or grandma? I actually call her nanny because it's okay, very i like that it's very common like british um yeah, yeah, and I then like that. my grandfather's italian so he's um he's papa oh i like that yes <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good that's pretty good yep. i'm in i'm in the uh grandparent stage now so i was like usually when the when they're real young they call me yeah. pop pop but pop, then it, pop, pop. yeah but it, i like that but it it eventually evolves into papa and i'm okay with that too papa see now that's southern oh it's southern uh, yeah, that's it's pretty what... common around here but if you talk to somebody say on the west coast or something they're like Papa, what what is that no papa is what i call him for fun when i joke around and i'm like I'm joking around like that moonshine, that bathtub moonshine. And I'm like, this ain't Pawpaw's bathtub moonshine. But but my grandfather, he is Italian. So it's like, Papa, you know, it's like, like very. That. <laughs> that sounds fun. Yes. <laughs> my family's like fun. We're a little, we're a little nuts, but we're fun. <laughs> Loud. Well, please come back anytime. I, I thank you. And I had a blast with you. You were excellent. And um, I just, I love when I can have free flowing, fun conversations <laughs> like this. So thank you for, no, seriously. I mean it. Thank you for allowing me to be myself. And, of course. and, um, I, I love it. It, it. This is very, very much of a safe space and such a fun, such a fun, fun podcast. So thank you for having me. You're so kind to say that. Thank you Hello. so much. Okay. Absolutely. Hold on one second. All right. So that was the talented Jessly. Hope you enjoyed that. My apologies that we had a couple of uh, issues, including uh, my dumbass freezing up at the beginning. I think we've done today. I put out episode six hundred and thirty, and I don't think I've ever froze up uh, before. So kind of humorous. So I'm guessing, knowing uh, Brett, uh, he'll leave it in there because he'll think it's funny. So I'm guessing you've heard it. Um, so my apologies that uh, that that happened, but Jessly was terrific. She absolutely was uh, just went with it. You know, we uh, froze up one time because I was. We do we put out normally four or five episodes a week, sometimes as many as six, and it takes up a lot of computer space. You know, those episodes. So every once in a while, I run out of space, and so that happened during the interview. So that was an easy fix. I just moved some stuff to the cloud, jumped right back in. We were good, uh, good to go. And then uh, she ran into an issue where she wasn't plugged up. That stuff happens on Zoom. I know that uh, that you know that uh, that have been watching or listening. We don't hide that. You know, we'll edit, but we don't hide the mistakes. Usually, we just go ahead and leave them because we we make those, and it's so much easier when you can just say, "Yeah." 
we we messed that up, but we learned from it, so we won't do that again. So the song is South of Somewhere. If you haven't heard her or you didn't see her on The Voice, she's got she's incredible. She's got the best uh, voice. Absolutely love it. It's very powerful. Um, just a, a really fun singer and talented. And I love the backstory. You know, she's very open about the struggle she went through, the journey she's had. And I just, I love it when people are uh, vulnerable that way. It's not always easy to talk about the difficult times or the, you know, some some of the negative times. But it's really important, I think, and it's cathartic when you can do that. So good for her that she was able to do that. Please support her and keep an eye out for for the album. And when she starts touring, I, I bet she just puts on an amazing show. She's such a, a positive energy force. So I, I um, look forward to seeing her in concert. If you're finding us for the first time, thank you. Really appreciate that uh, that you're watching or listening. We could use your support. It's real easy to do. It's free. If you're watching, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Just hit that subscribe button. Helps us a ton. If you're listening, wherever you're listening from, just subscribe there. That'll help us as well. You can find all 630 episodes and counting audio and video on our website, MeisterCon.com. So please check us out there. We are also recently named one of IMDb, which is the entertainment database, uh, one of their top 100 podcasts. 15 million podcasts out there. So pretty proud of the fact that we uh, broke into the top 100. We are number 82. So check us out there. It's IMDb.com. Um, it's free. Go on there. Look up Too Opinionated. And just check out our page there. That'll help us as well. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, Please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. Doesn't cost you anything. Really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even. If you're not listening or watching all of the time, and we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our our guest list I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like, or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked, but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors 
on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know we've got producers, directors, um, video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.